All right, everybody. I totally forgot what to say there. All right, so <laughs> just ignoring all that. And hey there, everyone. Thank you for joining us in Ascended Fitness Podcast. This is Coach Garrett. This is that guy, Tom. And then we do have a special guest, Dr. Organic here. You want to say hi, Dr. Organic? Hi. <laughs> there she is. So this is actually Dr. Carly Hansen, um, and uh, we are bringing her on for this uh, special episode of having our very first guest. Episode five. Episode. <gasps> God, Tommy, you're always making the mic spike. Whoa. Jesus. It's, 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 it's exciting. <laughs> Jesus. It's exciting. Episode five. Why oh. are you going to... I hate on my my vibe, yo. Oh, he's giving me that look, y'all. <laughs> I, I don't even know how to respond to that. I'm gonna go to go to go to corner now and just cry my, myself to sleep. <laughs> so, uh, um, what me and Tom uh, came up with with our idea of guest is um, we're gonna have like each episode of a guest is gonna be like completely uh, designated to like. Or dedicated to um, one of us. So, like today, my the the guest on the show, Doctor Organic here. Um, <laughs> it's it's gonna stay. It, it, accept it. It's just it's accept just it. accepted. Okay. Accept it. Um, <laughs> it is pretty much like my my guest. So, uh, um, and then the next episode that we're gonna have with the guest appearance is gonna be Tom over here of, yeah, of his we're, choice. We're organ out. I, I I should have said person here. Um, we'll hear back from them soon, and we'll get that worked out. Hopefully, in the next few days, but. Um, yeah, I, I and mind you, if you guys are wondering why Doctor Organic came about, I was at work today and uh, I wanted to kind of, you know, I usually do drawings, whatever, for the podcast. So yeah, I wanted to kind of uh, think of a cool like like title card moves, you know, but like for a podcast. So oh, I yeah. drew something up, which you'll see on the on the actual image box for the podcast. But yeah, so for those of that of you that are like brand new um, listeners, all the, the the pretty much the podcast episodes, like oh. the artwork there is all drawn up by Tom himself for every episode. So it is like all custom artwork. Um, hence why there's autographs on it. And then we put our logo on it in mm -hmm. a very hard area to get rid of so yeah um, <laughs> it, it is uh yeah it is all original artwork done by him including this one um which is just very awesome it's very phenomenal well Good job. i mean i i could have done a lot better but i thought it was pretty cool for like a two-hour job you know yeah so, it was really awesome yeah. was I, it? It. I tried to make kyle look all like all kind of like the old like school like pop culture horror stuff you don't like the to the skin, you know, and like the big eyes, whatever. And I mean, you had that going for you, which I'm jealous of. Actually, you had like tinted those, skin. Those, no, no, no. <laughs> Just eating a lot of kelp. Yeah, <laughs> you had those like big eyes. So, like from like, an artist point of view, it's easy like to make like the artistic like cartoon eye oh, when you're yeah. doing it. Gotcha. So big anime eyes. Yeah, <laughs> I get that a lot. Actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kawaii. Oh, oh, I can't believe I said that a lot. Ooh, but anyway, or what is, ooh. Oh no, I don't know. <laughs> you don't no, even know how to say anything no. like it well, because my sister. Roar. Well, I mean, yeah, she she does that all the time. So I was my girlfriend, and, and I just what? yeah, I want to vomit or something here. Anyway, but uh, I I thought it'd be cool to have like a little picture for later for episode five, and then. I was typing out like the the information like episode five with Carly. I'm like, would be a cool like uh, uh, name, and I, and I messaged Garrett. And I'm like, hey, uh, is, she's a master's, and that's no a doctorate, right? Yeah, I'm like, Doctor Organic. Okay, cool. <laughs> you know, so uh, I thought it was, you know, cool to. Because the only other thing that I came up with um, for this episode title is. Um, you're a GMO too, and here's a doctor to prove it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I like Doctor Organic um, a, a whole lot better. Um, and pr pretty much with that being said, how about we go into exactly why we're saying that? So, yes. Carly, if you uh, Doctor Doctor Hansen here, <laughs> you, how about you actually introduce yourself, who you are, what your your, your field is, and your expertise, and and uh, just you know, tell them who you are. Sure. So I'm Carly Hansen. Um, I just got my doctorates in physical organic chemistry from Loyola University of Chicago. Um, and I'm currently like waiting to start my postdoc at the University of Ottawa in Canada, um, where I'll be doing uh, reaction mechanisms of antioxidants. So. so would you be able to tell me how much antioxidants I should have to be healthy and still do meth? No, definitely not. Yeah. I'm not that type of doctor. <laughs> so, 
so I That's actually... That's the bold thing you're asking for there, buddy. <laughs> I remember I asked that my one professor about that when we were learning about antioxidants, and he, he, he like, brought up, like, drugs. I'm like, well, how much antioxidants should I need to fight the free radicals <laughs> to safely do meth? And he just kind of was like, Shh, shut up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's like, the amount that you would need would kill you, so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Even I'm like, but so right off the bat, I do have my first question. You said yeah. physical organic chemistry. Yes. Um, is there like non physical organic chemistry? Um, yeah. So physical organic is just like a specific subsect of organic chemistry. So I guess there are like five major divisions of chemistry that most people think about. So you have um, biochem, you have organic, obviously, you have inorganic, um, analytical, and then did I say inorganic? Yeah, you said inorganic. I feel like I'm forgetting one. Physical? Technology? Yeah, physical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and then physical chemistry. So physical organic is obviously a combination of physical chemistry and organic chemistry. Really all it means is that we study reaction mechanisms. So you do a lot of kinetics to figure out how the reactions are actually proceeding. And that way, the, the whole goal of it is, you know, to find inefficiencies or to find a way to make the reaction more efficient. So okay. it's See, kind of like that thought process. Why couldn't you be my teacher in high school? My teacher was like, oh, you already made yeah. it PG-13. <laughs> Damn it, Tom. You used our one F word on the stupidest thing. <laughs> actually, no, no. Just bleep defense, it out. <laughs> my, actually, we could. We could. We I could bleep it out. Yeah. All right. So everyone, just to... Well, you're going to hear a bleep, so I ignore what we said. We're going to do another F-bomb, well, I guess. This is just just a final F-bomb was that my, my high school chem teacher was like, spoke like this, turned to page 76, let's learn about Bueller. it. It was the Bueller. low monotone, like, oh, you God. wanted to tear your hair out no. at the end of the day. And I'm sitting there, and one day specifically, and to kind of, I guess, make a gross funny story, my chem teacher would always come, you know, like, bad burrito. Um, Dorito? Bad burrito. Oh, burrito. Yeah. Mm. Like, you, you can tell if it's bad burrito or not. And we're worrying about that day about... Um, Is he going to gas you out? Is no. that what you're going to worry? <laughs> Is this the day that he's well, just going to fart actually, out mustard gas? Well, no, it's actually we were talking about, like, gaseous stuff in our <laughs> chemistry book. And I remember walking in, and I had to laugh because it was just like... He came in, and I smelled it, and I was like, oh. And then I opened the textbook, and I was like... Chapter blah, blah blah about gases, and I'm like, oh god! And I had like this moment of like stomach turning happen because the thought of like him <laughs> and a smell burrito kind of made me nauseous at the time. Oh jeez. Yeah, so that's why I guess the F bomb is justifiable because yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll say Mr. E, uh, you didn't really get, do a good job of teaching me chemistry because your low monotone voice and impeccable. So should I try and find this teacher and make no. sure to <laughs> like take him in it? Just forward the link to him and be like, hey, just by the way, Thomas Thomas just did a, a giant shout out to you. Yeah, yeah, he uh, he's gonna go back in your school records and just put like incomplete. <laughs> <laughs> so that next time, so like you go back to college and they're gonna need like your transcripts from high school. They're gonna be like, yeah. So your science, you're gonna have to take the O ninety five class. <laughs> what? What I was trying to say is that you sound very passionate about it, and I think yes. I actually, I kind of got excited, like, oh, hey, I'm learning about stuff, you know? I mean, mind you, we're 27 comes Sunday, but I'm actually learning stuff right now, and not having to worry about some monotone teacher that makes an old burrito smell trying to teach me about gaseous states and stuff like that, so... Well, thank you. I don't know. So, so five, y'all. Um... <laughs> Going back to chemistry, um, so what would you say are, like, the most popular fields of chemistry? In, like, what sense? Like, like um, I guess, like, the ones that are most, like, widely, like, used. Um, I, would obviously. Right. I would say, I mean, like, obviously analytical is used a lot in industry because of QC stuff, quality control. Um, but other than that, probably biochem and organic are probably the main two that people really think about. Um Mainly just because of pharma, so. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what, what, like, are, like, the other fields of chemistry, they're just, like, um, would you just say they're just not popular because they're not, like, really widely known, or are they just kind of, like, newer formed fields? I want to like say. they branched off recently. No, so, honestly, I, no, I mean, most of the fields have been around around the same time. I want to say 
don't quote me on this, but I want to say Organic's probably one of the newer ones. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, along with, like, Biochem. But, like, Inorganic and, like like I said, Analytical, just because of QC, so it's kind of used everywhere, just people don't really think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, Inorganic and then Physical, I would say they're, like, more, like, niche-type subject areas, so... Inorganic, like, you can do, like, surface science type stuff, so it's, like, semiconductors, like, inorganic. Um, I mean, they do do some stuff that, sorry, (laughs) that goes into, like, pharma, um, you know, like, looking at ligands and stuff like that on specific metal centers. Um, That's more inorganic. Gotcha. Um, But, yeah, I guess, like, I guess biochem and organic are more proliferated just because I guess they have, like, a they tie back to things that people understand a little bit better, I guess, like the human body or stuff that people, I guess, like can directly compare to. Yeah. Like me. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So what kind of like made you uh, make the decision? I like just be like, yeah, I want to go into and organic chemistry. I want to like specialize in this. Um, yeah, so honestly, it was kind of like a last minute decision. I knew that I wanted to go to grad school after undergrad, just because I felt like there was so much that I still didn't know. Um, After going through grad school, there's still so much I don't know. So, um, hence postdoc. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, I mean, it's just it's constantly learning. So and that's what I love about chemistry is like, it's, you know, like, there's always something else to find. Yeah. Um, So it's an ever growing field, and it's applicable to everyday life. So, yeah. and it seems like that's just the deal with like anything in science is like you're lear- yeah there's something new yeah. coming out every single day like either with like medical organic inorganic and physical and then um, just things of that nature like yeah like we're constantly advancing so there's mm-hmm. constantly new research and then with the new research you're co- co- uh, combining getting like uh, meta analysts and finding new stuff out every single day it's just rapidly changing so Mm -hmm. which is which is awesome like yeah constantly learning so if you have that student mind (laughs) science is for you not for me (laughs) (laughs) no no sir (laughs) (laughs) so like you were saying it was like a last minute decision yeah like what was like another decision that you're going to go to if it wasn't organic um i really wanted to do like material type stuff so i guess a little bit more like P-chem slash inorganic. I guess those were, like, my two main fields. I was really just looking for something that would apply to what I want to do career-wise afterwards, which is cosmetic chemistry. And so um, after I talked with a lot of professors, like, organic just kind of lines up with a lot of, like, the skill sets that you would need for formulation, which is what I want to do. So I think that's ultimately why I decided on it. Awesome. Um, So... How about you tell like the people like uh, like some careers that you could do with organic chemistry going through like either because you were I know you were saying the other day um, that pretty much you start specializing in chemistry like into grad school correct yeah yeah so yeah why don't you like tell some people like what careers you could do with like your masters and doctorates in organic chemistry what are some like some common ones I guess like common ones that people go like. Either there are like two main routes people will go once they have their doctorates. Um, it's either academia or they go into industry. So academia is pretty straightforward. Like you're going to be a professor at a higher education institute. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of them go on to like conduct their own research and become principal investigators at, in their own lab um, mm-hmm. and kind of mentor other students. That's kind of the main goal. Bring um, up the new wave of, of scientists. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then, like I said, others go into industry. Um, which is what I want to do, just because I don't have the patience to really teach students. So deal with the youths. I, well, d- then, I can't. I don't. For someone like me, where yeah. you know, I mean, it's just kind of in a serious note that really has a difficult time focusing mm-hmm. on science and, and the, I guess, the, put it simply, the bold text and, and numbers that come behind it. Mm-hmm. How would you tell someone like me how to kind of not be intimidated by? research how would you go about doing that sure so i will say that's kind of one of the i wouldn't say downside of chemistry but a lot of like orgo and chemistry itself is it's a lot of jargon so i always equate it to like learning a second language Mm -hmm. just because you know you have to you have to get up to speed with 
the scientific terms for everything. Correct. Because, I mean, if you're trying to, like, publish or do research, like, people are going to expect you to talk on that type of level. Yes. Um, obviously, like, you want to know your your uh, audience. So, I mean, like, I've yeah, gone to... Layman terms. Yeah, I've gone to conferences where it's, like, interdisciplinary. So you're talking to, like, multiple fields. <laughs> um, Talks to me all the time. And so <laughs> I always tell people, like, for that, like, you know, like, I don't know. Try and like explain your chemistry like you would be talking to your parents because most of the okay, time they're not okay. really. So I think that's probably the hardest part is getting caught up on the jargon. But once you do, it's pretty simple. I don't know. Well, no, and that's and that's precisely you know. I mean, for me at least, it's it really is a second language. You know, because mm-hmm. you're, you're having mm-hmm. English mesh up with these words that relate to something important, but my brain's like, what did you just say to me right now? Because right. I, I'm not even comprehending what right. and a lot of an isotope is or, or right, something like that. <laughs> right. And it's really interesting because like a lot of the scientific advances that happened early on were actually from like Germans. And so there's a lot of German oh, wow. words. Yeah. About that. Especially in like organic chemistry that kind of pop up all over the place and like they're just brought into the scientific jargon there. Um, so it's That's just cool. it's just kind of interesting. So I wish yeah. like a, a fun fact button, like fun fact, <laughs> you know? Yeah, like like uh, like uh, instead of a that was easy button, just yeah. fun fact. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Well, well that was that a fun fact. fact. Yeah, but fun yeah, fact. so I don't know. <laughs> Insert the slideshow. The more you know. <laughs> 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 well, thank you. I, I didn't answer my question. I appreciate it. Did it? Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, what was like your original view on? earning your doctorate like how did you think it was going to go compared to actually yeah, how it did I mean, go okay <laughs> so you obviously hear stories that like it's hard and like i knew that going in but it's like it's soul crushing like i'm not gonna lie um it's a Jeez. lot of it's a lot of time it's a lot of effort so i luckily was fortunate enough to get out on time so i only spent five years i've known people that have taken like seven years um, I've known people that have taken eight. That's obviously not typical. Like, most people get it within five or six years. And is that, like, by, like, five to six years, are you meaning just in the chemistry field or, like... Yeah, I'm talking okay. in the chemistry okay. field. So, and it also depends on your field. Like, I will say, usually analytical chemists tend to get out on time, but their stuff is, like, a little... I don't want to say more straightforward, but, I mean, there's only, like, so much you can do with analytical chemistry. Mm-hmm. Um... Whereas, like, I don't know, other fields, like, you're relying, especially orgo or, like, biochem, um, you're relying on reactions to work the way they're supposed to, and a lot of the time that doesn't happen. And so it's just a lot of troubleshooting. Um, Like, my first two years, I was on a project that we ultimately ended up killing just because there just wasn't enough time in the day for me solely to get where we needed to go to publish. And that's the big thing is in grad school, you have to get papers out. Otherwise, it's going to look like you didn't do anything in grad school once you graduate. So So if it wasn't for that project, would you have graduated in three years then? Or a year sooner, like four years? Potentially. I probably would have been able to explore further avenues on the project that I ultimately got put on at the end. Okay. And we might have like been able to get further on it gotcha. than like, where I did. Is it unheard of of people like finishing their doctorates in three or four years in the chemistry field? I've known people that have finished it within four years, but yeah, that's pretty rare. Um, I don't know anyone that's gone under four years. They'd have to be like doing like seventy-hour work. Weeks, yeah, I mean, like uh, you pretty much have day. to be like sleeping in the, uh, in the lab, which gotcha. is illegal. They don't allow that in the states anymore. Fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> Keyword anymore. <laughs> well, actually, there there were some universities that like once a grad student like signed on, they needed proof that you actually had a, like an outside address really? from the school. Wow. Yeah, to like prove that you weren't like camping out in your office and sleeping there, because some advisors are douche holes like to put it (laughs) i guess i don't have better terms so i mean like for anyone that's interested in going to phd like i wouldn't say like don't do it like obviously it's going to be hard but my biggest piece of advice is find like an advisor that you actually get along with really well um i mean you can be as interested in their research as you want to be but if they're going to be like a giant douche to you you're going to be unhappy the entire time you're there and it makes it really hard to like be motivated to actually, yeah. like, go into lab and do stuff and just, um, at yeah, your full capacity. Just continue with it and actually yeah. finish it. Yeah, because a lot of grad school is, it's all self-motivation. 
So, uh, I <laughs> looked <laughs> there a lot. <laughs> just, just, yeah, opening up the locker door and it's like, Neil, yes, I will do this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Bill Nye, I got you. I'm doing this for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you have to find that self motivation. I will say some days are easier than others, especially like, you know, like when you spend two years on a project that isn't going anywhere. It's, it's really hard to get yourself to like want to go into lab that day to work on something yeah. you know isn't really going anywhere gotcha um so uh where was that okay this is where we're at all right so um <laughs> like other than chemistry because like um oh yeah i never really did say that yeah this doctor person over here is also my girlfriend <laughs> so um, <Fun> <laughs> 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 um but uh so i pretty much like know a lot of like yeah like where she wants to go and what she wants to do but like um, and just her interests in general. So, like, other than chemistry, like, how would you tell everyone, like, your other, like, hobbies and interests? And Oh, man. Uh, I feel like I have a lot. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm one of those people that has to keep myself busy. So, um, I do a lot of, like, painting and drawing. I guess painting more than drawing nowadays. Yeah. Um, I'm old and I do a lot of cross-stitch stuff. Which she makes some awesome <laughs> oh, cross <my> Dude. <laughs> dude. That fifth only one? Yeah, the the giant fifth element that I'm Dude. pretty sure is as big as my 55 inch TV over here. It's, I'm, it's definitely not. <laughs> I, I'm super stoked to see when it's done. Oh, I'm excited too. for it. Me too. <laughs> like, you don't even know. <laughs> I've been working on it for like half a year now, and I think I'm only like a third of the way done. Because so awesome. so. how how big is it gonna be again? It's like 22 by like 30 or something like that, ain't it? Something like that. It's big. <laughs> by the big boom um but what about <coughs> makeup oh yeah the, um yeah and then i guess i'm like i wouldn't say it's a hobby i'm just like i'm i'm a makeup hoarder it's pretty bad um i thought for a while i wanted to do um like makeup artistry and be a makeup artist like tom. I, yeah like tom but then i did an internship uh my between my junior and soph no sophomore and junior year of high school um, for a uh, wig and makeup department for an opera company, and it was hell. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. Oh, yeah. um, so that's kind of what sparked my interest in going into chemistry, um, was that the lady that I was interning under um, was like, well, why don't you go into cosmetic chemistry which i didn't know was a thing yeah um and i was like oh okay like that's a thing <laughs> yes why didn't anyone tell me this sooner <laughs> so pretty much from that point on i knew i wanted to like pursue chemistry to go get my that's awesome degree to do cosmetic chemistry yeah so and that's pretty much like your your goal point right now is it is going yeah to it. yeah um but you know covid happened so jobs are kind of eh, right now well, which is fine because <laughs> postdoc yeah, postdoc. Yeah. You can make a, a makeup that I could put on a horror thing that can actually withstand sweat. And, uh, right, and that uh, was her thing that'd be, too. That'd be great. That'd that be was great. her thing too. Is like finding you know better cake makeup yeah. that lasts longer, but is also easier to take off. Like at yeah, the end of the day, because like that we stuff stays on. Coconut oil. Yeah, we use cold wipes, cream. We were like, here's some cold, cold cream. cream. <laughs> it, it, it's it's whole, ridiculous. Yeah. And then we had to use like these sponges if you will to kind of rub it off the skin and it's, mm -hmm. it's always like a mm -hmm. process yeah so. no yeah. i feel yeah um so what about like some of like well you said you're like yeah you're you're in with it, like an 80 year old lady with cross stitching yeah for and, real um <laughs> you're, you're going into makeup uh but like what about some other things like nerdy stuff other than chemistry nerdy stuff other than like chemistry? geeky stuff I, don't, okay. I think cross stitching is pretty geeky. Oh, I mean, <laughs> let's not talk about the video gaming or the anime. Uh, or I always forget cross, that. I, uh, I, I, don't said, I almost said cross dressing, and I meant <laughs> cosplaying. Okay, I don't really cosplay a whole lot. Just like uh, that one time. Wait a minute. <laughs> that wait one a minute. Time. <laughs> that was fire. Okay, that was lit at, at my girlfriend's party when you came in as a. Uh, uh, Coraline's uh, um, other mother, other mother, mother, other yeah. mother. Yeah, that was fire. Thank so you. So <laughs> you need to hop on that train, yo. I'm, I'm trying to. There. I just like I don't have the money to. I guess it's yeah. Plus, like none of my friends really do that. So it's like my sister-in-law has a bunch of cosplays. Look awesome. 
Yeah, so, they do. I mean, His sister-in-law is a public teacher. She has no money either. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but she has friends that do it. That's true. Uh, well, I, I have do a friend. Not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I just met you like recently. Two years. That's not recent. That's recent. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I guess, yeah, I do watch anime and I do play video games. And she got me into a very messed up anime. Two, like, one actually, like, super messed up, Parasite. Oh, that is a messed up one. That is you should read the manga. It's way messed better. up, but <laughs> fantastic. And then the second one is just messed up because you're like, good God, Japanese perversion to the max. Yeah, it's pretty bad. High School of the Dead. It's pretty I got bad. Uh, Angie and uh, a lot of my other friends, too, like, they're trying to... I, I gotta hop on the anime train, I guess. I gotta find what I like. I gotta hop on the You don't the watch train. anime? No. I don't oh, read manga either. that shocks me. What? Well, I guess in a sense it was ruined for me because I mean I grew up with DBZ, which is you know sure, sure. The, 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 I guess Garrett's the staple thing. standard yeah. for for anime. But sure. um, also for me too, I just I guess the art style in a sense never appealed to me. But I know I understand. Of art, if you look past that, there's still a great story behind it, you know. So I should try to hop but on. There's the like I don't know. I'm very picky about my animation style with animes too. So like there are some like I just can't get into because like I hate the way it's animated yeah like, yeah i couldn't get into bleach for that very reason like yeah what is the design called bleach yeah it's apparently oh. really good okay. i just like i never got it's been out like since what like i know cowboy bebop and um, yeah someone recommended that one to me too and it's like it's meh but like the animation style again doesn't really appeal to me so i'm just I've like been, man i heard i need to watch it and then also um see i i love the spawn animated um series on hbo but it came back in the day that was awesome it was fantastic so yeah. i thought like, that's my only i guess anime exposure i've actually had that i've fought a whole series with but i should hop on the show with you guys and i guess parasite said parasite, parasite, parasite yeah, okay. yeah. yeah so if you're into horror stuff um parasite's good because it's it's just fucked up i mean it's just there it is we'll leave it <laughs> I, like that one. I like that one it's just this the easiest yeah. way to like it's just it's messed up um, I really liked Blood Plus. Like, it's about... It's hard to explain. It's basically about this lady that kills demons. Wait, what's it called? Blood, Blood Plus. Plus. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we, we found out that, um, was there, that that's, like, actually, like, a sequel. It technically it? Yeah. is, yeah. But, like, you don't need to watch the, like, the prequels to yeah. understand what's really going <coughs> kinda on. Kind of like... <coughs> honestly, it's kind of like the... Um, reminds me of the anime, um, Fate Stay Night. There's Fate, and then there's, like, Fate Stay Night, and there's, like, a bunch of different ones, but... You could just pick up any one of those, and you'll like. You don't have to watch the other ones. They kind of like oh, either they awesome. they recap or like this. It's just like a whole new story. It's kind of like a, yeah, kind of. It kind of picks up where the other ones left off, but like she has amnesia, so she doesn't remember anything okay. from before. Yeah. So it's kind of you piecing together what happened gotcha, anyway. Gotcha. So it's almost like that, you're in her shoes. Yeah, <laughs> but it's you don't say that one gets pretty gory, so I think that's why I like it. I'll check it out for sure. I I mean I I I have to hop on the train sometime and see yeah. how it is. Well, dude. Honestly, like Castlevania anime though. Yeah, Castlevania yeah. Oh, is really God, good that too. That was I watched like, that Netflix. Oh, yeah, that was good. So all of you, yeah, we're just getting into the major geeky <laughs> topics now. But like honestly, the, like those of you that like dislike anime or just like animated TV shows, um, but you love like either just horror or like action or just the good like fantasy role playing type thing, um, the uh, Castlevania um, anime. On Netflix, it's a Netflix original, is amazing. We actually got um, Carly's roommate heavily who like addicted hates. To him. Well, she calls them cartoons. Like she yeah, won't cartoons. Watch, she won't watch anything animated. Yeah. Why? Why? She, I don't know. She just doesn't like it. So. Well, I love Castlevania. That's a great show. It, it's awesome. I think it's fantastic. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I watched Castlevania. Was when it first came out a couple years ago. Um, on Netflix and all was great and I played video games too mind you um, and I loved them back in the day playing Super Nintendo and all that kind of stuff too but I guess in a sense I just grew up with the basic DBZ you know universe and yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff with, with anime so <laughs> yeah and um, what you may call it uh, but yeah like the Castlevania anime was just tight yeah it was good it was really good um, but uh Oh, let me pull up my questions again. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. folks. I am I am a terrible host. I didn't even offer you a water or anything. I'm sorry. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> since you're like a master in organic chemistry, emphasis on organic, 
going into pretty much you know the sun fitness podcast uh, realm yeah. and like how we like to try and push buttons um what's your opinion on organic foods uh i think it's a cop out i don't know like one organic's just such a broad term um really it really just means anything that's carbon based which is like every living thing <laughs> so i don't know it's just like it bothers me um plus the fact that like anything that you're buying in the stores that's labeled as organic has been treated with some kinds of pesticides it's just like they kind of it's like certain pesticides that the fda has deemed i don't know for whatever reason organic friendly um but they are still treated with pesticides there's no way they can be shipped two stores without having some kind of pesticide on them. So really the only true like quote organic end quote is anything that you grow in your backyard. Yeah like anything that you can grow in your backyard or like if you go to a farmer's market and you know a farmer that you know like doesn't use pesticides although most of them do. Does farmer markets they could get around the FDA regulations then? I I honestly I'm not really sure like what they need for their license to sell, but I think it's a lot less strict. That's what I thought. Like, it's pretty like sure, almost like a garage sale. Right? Yeah, like yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure you just need like a like a license to yeah. like sell Carbon stuff. Yeah. Like yeah, like. A but food I don't license. I don't think anyone actually goes around and actually checks the food, from what I. But like yeah. I, I don't know the all the background of farmers markets. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess the only way to like certify that it hasn't been like sprayed with pesticides is to grow it yourself yeah <laughs> grow it yourself so staying on topic with organic foods then what about gmos what's your what's your uh scientific opinion on gmos i get why people like freak out but i feel like the term gmo has just gotten so much like stupid backlash over the decades um, because, I mean, like, bananas are technically a GMO. Delicious. Like, the way that they were, like, 40, 50 years ago aren't what we have in stores mm-hmm. today because so, they've been crossbred. I'm, I'm almost actually I really mean, like, happy that she brings up bananas. So, fun fact about bananas. Um, if you want to taste an old-fashioned banana before it was all really GMO, like, based, um, eat a Laffy Taffy. The old school that's banana. Uh, yep, that's how they tasted. It, it was actually how they tasted. I did not know that, and they just never changed it because people just became acclimated. It's like, oh, that's just candy banana. No, that actually used to be banana. And <sighs> and, um, and and I guess like the I, I don't know the chemical. I'm sure you would. That smells like bananas, like the Laffy Taffy bananas. Yeah. So um, we've actually synthesized it in in teaching labs a couple times. Can I have that as like a perfume? No, it's awesome. Like, it smells <laughs> awful. It's isoamyl acetate is what it's called, yeah. and so it's wow. honestly pretty easy to make. But like, I don't know. Back when we, I think they they've tried to stop getting the students to synthesize that as part of their lab because they started drinking it. No, it's just like when you have like thirty students making banana smelling compounds, it yeah. gets it, nasty. It gets <laughs> just smelling like it's laffy just, taffy yeah, for the rest it's of the day. Disgusting. And the rest of the week. Yeah, pretty much. But, yeah, there's, like, even just then, yeah, coming from me, like, the um, nutrition aspect of it, like, there's so many things that are, broccoli is a yeah. GMO. I'm sorry, but if you love bro- broccoli and you're going out, it's like, oh, I'm buying non-GMO organic broccoli, it's like, you're just wasting your money and you're lying to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> like, broccoli, fully GMO, and then what, like, um, Jim was saying, wasn't it, like, pineapples, too? Like, they had to, like, clone them. I don't remember, them. but maybe. It was either pineapples or avocados. They had to clone them because they were, like, there was just a giant, um, like, I can't think of the word. They, uh, like, like uh, the main crop, like, just died out. They couldn't keep up with it. Um, there was, like, was a giant. Soil, was the soil, like, tainted or something like it, that? It was something or? like that. So they, they had to clone, like, the, the produce to actually right. do it. And since it's technically cloned. And it was like lab controlled. It's a GMO, right? And I don't know. It's just it's just stupid. I mean, like everything that let we know produce today has pretty much been modified in some way. Mm-hmm. Granted, like it's not happened in a lab, which I know is like people's main concern. Yeah. Which is just funny when you think about all these like plant based 
like meat products that are being pushed out on yeah, the market like and Beyond everyone's meat, fine yeah, with those which like one they're really cool and revolutionary and it's it awesome that like you can you know mimic meat from a plant and it's perfect and all the science that that went behind to try and mimic yes. all the proteins because yes. basically what they did is they took the, the meat and like kind of extracted out all the proteins that end up like making it taste that way mm -hmm. and then they found a lot of those proteins you can find in plants and so yeah. they literally just like science synthesize them over and then it was just a matter of you know making textures the same yeah which is pretty awesome and I, I always tell people that are like trying to switch more into a plant um, style diet to like yeah like honestly like if you love your burgers you love your steaks you love your meatballs go out and get that because it has the same texture but honestly it just has a little bit more sodium than like regular meat but it, the way that I see it it's just it's already seasoned it's pre-seasoned because um, that's it you just get a little bit saltier but it has so much more of your of your leafy greens and vegetables and um, has like all the good fibers in it that and it helps you transition into that mm -hmm. plant right. style. Plus that way we're not, you know, killing as many cows. Yeah, and they're reducing all the carbon footprint a little bit. Yeah, and like that um what's that one uh, company like uh Kadoba or Kadoa? The, the chicken nuggets stuff that I got. Corn? Oh yeah, corn. <laughs> oh, um, I Kadoba. <laughs> I don't know where my mind was going. But yeah, corn with a Q. <laughs> um, it uses mycoprotein. Uh, we talked about it yeah. before, um, and it, it, it really cuts down on emissions and footprints, which is awesome. Awesome. Um, but, um, but yeah, even, yeah, like, even on a science, like, aspect, like, um, and just simple thing of, like, a GMO, going back to the Punnett Square system, mm -hmm. technically, like, we're GMOs, like, and you could like make like there's there's they're doing this like you could literally make a human in a lab now they're they're trying it they're working on it so that just terrifies me though yeah and and there's there's obviously not the average person but there's the billionaires and millionaires that are investing in it because they want to have the perfect kids they don't want to have like well what what scares me is like we're getting into a part where you know the government's starting to control science a lot more which yeah i get to a certain extent but it's getting to the point where, like, because of, you know, gen genetically engineered humans are becoming a thing, you know, like, mm -hmm. only, like, choosing specific traits you want to pass down onto your offspring um, and essentially making them in, like, petri dishes and that type of stuff. Um, that's starting to become more controlled where only, like, the rich can yeah. do that. And so, like, people that are trying to, you know, like, find ways to diminish, um, like, autism rates or, you know, uh, Down syndrome are mm -hmm. able to like pay for those types of services yeah or, my mind. yeah it's or crazy. even like it should be like it should be more open i could see so many positivities with this like just people that are, that have a genetic uh chain of like brittle bones sure, or sure. um terrible eyes like uh, and just but i mean like you've seen it in the u.s already like healthcare here is it's just it's, crazy it's, yeah. it's marketed <laughs> towards <laughs> the rich mm -hmm. um you know and like the poor i just kind of shoved aside and so yeah those those things are starting to become as genetic engineering becomes more applicable and uh you know like we can we have better resources to actually attain it yeah um it's starting to get marketed as a, a marketing ploy i guess to yeah get more money but um and people still kind of do make like uh genetically controlled uh, babies just naturally because of that's like how you find um attractive people um, you want to have like pretty much you want to have a good mate in a sense and well, I mean uh, like that's all dictated by hormones yeah right? so. but so like even un, like un I, I the tall one I guess <laughs> unknowing <laughs> yeah <laughs> unknowingly like you're already doing it to try and make a good offspring so you're already trying like your body's like already naturally like hey yeah Predis so predisposed to yeah. find a mate that is suitable yeah. for yeah. and then you just it's make crazy. a GMO yourself but um <laughs> you don't say <laughs> and then my favorite one that I had to ask oh, because God. this has been pointed out to me that this will just put her down a rabbit hole what is your opinion on micellar water oh my god okay so for those of you that don't know micellar water has come on the market within the last couple of years um as a face cleaning cleaning uh product um, which is like fine, it does its job, but a micelle is literally how soap works. So they're selling you like soapy water. That's all it is. What's it called? 
My micellar cell- water? M I C E L L A R. Like Garnier yeah. makes it. And then like a lot of other companies have started making it. <laughs> but it's literally that's how soap works. Soap makes my cells. That's how it works. So basically what happens is you have these compounds that have a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. And so the hydrophobic tails will aggregate around each other, you know, so they're pointed towards the inside. Mm -hmm. And so you basically end up making this sphere uh, with the hydrophobic tails pointed inward. And that's where the dirt gets trapped in because it's like like oils and stuff. And then you have the hydrophilic heads, so water loving. And so those go on the outside so that they can actually be absorbed into the water. So it basically traps the dirt into the hydrophobic part. And then the hydrophilic part gets washed away with the water. So that's literally how soap works. That's all it is. This is like the experiment where you put, like, pepper in the water, and then you just put, like, a drop of soap in, and it just, like... It's literally... Yeah, it's literally... So my cellar water is literally, like, soapy water. That's pretty much all it is, because that's how soap works. Congratulations. You're washing your face... You're washing the soap off your face with other soapy water. I think I... I think they put it in, like... They put in, like, oils and stuff, like, specifically, like synthesized oils that are good for that but they were they do the same thing it's soapy water we're now rated r <laughs> well so then i gotta kind of triggered uh my guy um who he has a company well oh, a cosmetic yeah. company that death and body works mm-hmm. he makes a cbd body body wash okay um and he actually now mind you again i'm i'm a simple tin so i, I don't know the proper name for it, but he um, used a base with hemp oil to get the purest form of CBD in the soap body wash. Okay. So, in a sense then, would you say that that was a more reasonable way to get, you know, the, I guess the purest form of CBD compared to micellar water where it's just, you know, plain old soap? I mean, I do how to word it. Um, would you say that that's an actual more feasible thing to use on your body than micellar Right. Water. So I mean I mean yeah, it's it's definitely like a different market. So okay. micellar water is basically just a marketing ploy. So like kudos to the people that were like, Hey, let's just like dilute some soapy water <laughs> and then like stick a fancy label on it and sell it to people. Well, you know that one YouTube chick did it too. She sold her bath water. Uh, nope, I don't I that's don't That's what she should have done. She should have just said said it was her own micellar water. But that's already got the dirt in it. Like, nah. Well, <laughs> she was she was a genius for selling that. But I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> These crazy people. So I would say that they're they're two different markets. Okay. Is how I would say. It. So I mean, like CBD is definitely making a rise in cosmetics and personal care products. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that there's a lot of back and forth between like jurisdictions, like through the FDA, on whether it should be allowed versus whether it shouldn't. And a lot of that is because. Because marijuana is a um, psychoactive. Or no, it's a oh, level one drug or whatever the heck they classify oh, it as. Yeah. Oh. You can't do like you are not allowed to do testing on it in any sense because well, it is a so level one drug. Here's what I have, well with with my guy that does products. You know, I mean, with CBD stuff, I've learned through talking to you and doing research, they cut the purest form of like some sort of upper different base. You're not getting the purest form of the actual product. And I've used balms in the past mm-hmm. that are supposed to help with. Well, that's the, well, that's the thing too. Is like because there's so much back and forth with how yeah. to actually like regulate, like blah blah blah. A lot of these companies are saying that like there's CBD stuff in there and there's not. So it's just like it's not regulated very well, at least not in the U.S. Really, like anywhere, but definitely not in the U.S. Honestly, like a lot of the herbal and then just supplements and in general vitamins, minerals, CBD, and now the latest phase of being kratom. Yeah, um, they yeah that I know. I swear to God, if any of you listeners and you're like, oh, I do kratom. Just stop listening. Um, <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't be saying that to our listeners. <laughs> like, I, I there don't goes even... your one listener. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> out, out of the out of the twenty listeners, we went down to nineteen. But um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, like that whole base, like it is, it's it's very unregulated. Like th- there's been yeah. some, there's been companies completely shut down because they were selling all the same vitamin pills and it was just soy. Well that's well that's the dumb thing is like if you're if it's a multivitamin or a vitamin it doesn't have to go through the same regulations mm-hmm. as like a pharmaceutical drug would for the FDA. For whatever freaking reason. Like people decided that 
It could be an FDA it, approved factory, um, but not an actual like like so it's like the company the the factory itself is set up to FDA regulation, so sterilizations and everything, but the products themselves aren't regulated. See, that yeah. Which makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna stop while my head because it's just gonna hurt my brain. Like driving home, like why does this exist? But this doesn't exist. Okay, and, but that's why a lot I of companies tell you. they'll they'll start up as a supplement or a vit- or like a vitamin yeah. herbal company because they know they could get around all those other. Because you can get through the yeah, you, mm-hmm. it's like a weird like loophole in the system. Wow. And unfortunately, yeah, the FDA is completely like just like up to their their eyeballs and paperwork on on trying to research stuff. Yeah, uh, to make sure that it is safe for people, but they can't really do much. So I mean, I just for me at least, what I use again, going back to the CBD thing, I the stuff he created. It's it's called Reanimator Body Wash. You know, Reanimator. Mm-hmm. For any horror fans out there, you heard episode two or three about it. But uh, <laughs> um, you know, I use it on my back and my you know my shoulders for work, especially right now too, and it helps when I use it in the scrubber and like the skin. It's just, you know, any sort of product nowadays, I mean, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm an Italian, so I'm always sweaty or, or, or I guess, in a sense, uh, uh, have a film on me from me just being, you know, hairy and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, uh, with products like Micellar Water trying to, you know, promote that they're this, you know, company that can help with dirt or removal or whatever, and just for it to be soap, it's like... I, I actually, I, I got to give my hats off, you know, in a sense, for <laughs> selling the product people are buying it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's kind of, like, ridiculous that people don't research, you know, the products and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So. It, it well, does. I say it's a, I will say it's, like, a double-edged sword sometimes, too, because a lot of the consumers, at least in the cosmetic industry, are becoming a lot more aware of what's in their products, which is great. Um, but, you know, then you get people jumping on bandwagons and trying to eradicate, like, I don't know, certain compounds that have been in makeup for years. Um, Not saying that, like, just because it's been around forever, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, But... But this also could be to the point where it's like, obviously, it's been around forever because it's been proven to be safe or right. proven so to I know, work and be okay. I know that the big thing now is people are trying to take out sodium lauryl sulfate from a lot of personal care products. And that sounds scary. It's I literally, a, it. it's just a type of salt. <laughs> This is really what it boils down to. Like, there's no indication that it's not good for you. Pro tip, if you see sodium, it's salt. <laughs> not necessarily, but, but most of the time, yeah. So it's a different type of salt. Um, but at, actually, like, a follow-up question with, like, saying how, like, um, yeah, like, uh, marijuana and, and everything is, like, a type 1 drug and it can't really be studied in labs. Um, how do you feel about, like, yeah, like labs um, just being completely rejected on being able to do like research to pr- either prove the fact that it is safe or it isn't safe just because of what the federal government deems it deems it as automatically. Yeah, so I mean, I think it's 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 frustrating as a scientist. I guess I get why they do it in a sense, but it's easier for like a, a lab to obtain like meth than it is to like get marijuana to actually study it so and that might be changing since you know more states are legalizing it but i don't know until it goes to like a federal like regulation i don't know um it's just like it's annoying because yeah they've just deemed it horrible for whatever reason and now no one can really study it easily because of that is there like um other than like drugs are there like actual like um chemicals or just like uh formulations or anything that the federal government like deems is unsafe and labs shouldn't be studying or is it just really just mostly drugs um i would say the majority of it is definitely limited towards drugs um or like precursors that could be used to make certain drugs so i know like before we had to order a specific compound that had to go through like extensive background checks to make sure that we weren't using it to like make meth (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Which we weren't, so... Usually if it's going to, like, an academic setting, we, like, no. Eisenberg. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly for that reason. So, it's that type of stuff. I know in Italy, this is kind of, like, a weird fun fact. Um, in Italy, they don't use acetonitrile which is a common solvent, because its other name is um, methyl cyanide. And since it's cyanide, they think it's poisonous. <laughs> Really? Yeah, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> I mean, it's it's an organic solvent, so it's flammable, but it's not like 
it's gonna kill you. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So yeah, Italy won't let like researchers can't use a pseudo nitrile over Do there. Do you know of other countries that are like have the same thought process on that like um, what was it methyl cyanide? Yeah. That? Um, I don't know. I just know of Italy. Just for a random fun fact, um, I know that so like. MRIs are like the same type of instrument that we use in research, which we call it an NMR, so it's nuclear magnetic resonance. It's literally the same instrument, <laughs> um, but they changed it to MRI because when people heard nuclear, they automatically associated it to something A-bomb. bad. Yeah. <laughs> and we're literally meaning it like at the nuclear level. Like yeah. we can look at specific nuclei. And yeah, nuclei. So. Oops. But. <laughs> Yep. But that's why they changed it to MRI. But it's the same thing. <laughs> so, hey, everyone, fun fact. Um, you're in a giant nuclear bomb when you're going through an MRI. No, MRI. you're really not. It's just a, <laughs> just, Don't. It's, it's just a giant magnet. Calm down. <laughs> no, no it, it said nuclear. Stop it. It's not. <laughs> Stop. But, I'm sh- yeah, like, I'm honestly sure there's, like, just hundreds but of But, yeah, that, that type like of that, stuff like. is out there everywhere. It's just, yeah. Like I said, it's it's learning the jargon. Yep, and, and and it's also you know marketing like my cellar water. Yeah, They're, people are scared of it, so let's. Well, do my MRI. I guess my, my cellar water sounds better than soapy water. So. Yeah, yeah, so it sounds more. <laughs> well, it sounds organic. more organic, right? Yeah. More scientific. <laughs> but yeah, organic. It it still amazes me. Like, oh, it's GMO, it's organic, and it's gluten free, and you're like, but it's water, of course. Like mm. what? <laughs> Like, we were talking about the other day, and, like, I get it, like, people asking, like, oh, is this meat gluten-free? It's like, yeah, was it eating anything that contained gluten? But it's like, at that point, you're not going to have anything. Yeah. Right. It's like asking, like, can I, like, can I eat that chicken? Was, was, is it lactose-free? Like, (laughs) was this a male or a female cow? Like, was it a bull or, like, what? Like, I don't know. Well, you got what those, you you got, you got those crazy people drinking wa- raw water nowadays. Yeah. So. Well, I still loved um, the store that we worked at that <laughs> will name, that will stay unnamed because I don't want to get in trouble, but how they had um, organic sushi with imitation crab. That's, no, no that doesn't, that's how it works. Yeah. I that's mean, how it, works. it was synthesized, so. But. Organic? <laughs> I work in front. We're gonna like I said, it's, it's such a loose term that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Working for a secret department, imitation crab usually made up of either blue, blue. I'm not bluegill. Um, what white fish? Oh, so it's just different types of fishes. In uh, something else, it was a hat. It wasn't even crab meat. It was like again, like some type of fish and some other stuff added to it too. It wasn't even. So it's just a bunch of fish that are just, like, jammed together. Essentially, yeah. Just, so it's almost like the hot dog of, of... I would say yes. Or, like, the McNugget. Of <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, of the seafood. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's about that. some memories from high school. McNuggets? <laughs> Did you see the video? Uh, what was it? Uh, it Super Size Me? Oh, yeah. Pink Paste? Yeah. Um, yeah, they forever ruined me. Wasn't that from Arby's? No, that I, was McDonald's. Yeah, that was McDonald's, oh, I think. Oh, because I know Arby's has, like, pink paste for the roast beef that they somehow yeah. make into meat. <laughs> I also love how they're, like... supplement? But nowadays, like, people are, like, with the, um, the McGriddles and everything, and I was like, no eggs are circular. Show me a circular egg. It's like, all right, one is called you can do it with a cookie cutter. So yeah. use, use some logic there. And two, like... You're really you're gonna argue about an egg, but you're not gonna argue about anything else that you're gonna be eating. I will sandwich. say though, I've seen like the back houses of like McDonald's before, and it's gross. <laughs> Most so. fast food is because yeah. it has to be fast. Yeah, but. it's just like it's nasty. But also at the same time, it's like oh, it's nasty. It's like you go to any any um, like still like working in the hot food department, we had to do the same thing, and we were like labeling things as organic, non GMO, freshly yeah. made. By by a chef, and in the back, the chef is just warming it up in a bag. Well, my favorite line of all time, in which people, and this is somewhat factual, the term of grass-fed beef. There's literally, my, my butcher told me at the time, I won't say his name, asked me, what's, 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 what's good grass-fed, what's the difference? If I had a farm, I would say, hey, look that cow right there, it's eating grass. And I was like, wait, what, that's it? Yeah, it's just grass-fed, nothing really... Yeah, you know, it's the same somewhat protein base and everything else. Yeah, because yeah. there 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 are some that yeah they'll just have it out in pasture grass fed. 
Um, and and it doesn't doesn't even mean like they have to constantly be grass fed. At some point, they could just be yes. grass fed. It, they could be like the, the I'm pastor, it. right? Um, because uh, I I know of, of farms where yeah they do have like uh, specially made like kibble yeah. kind of thing, um, where it's like yeah corn, uh, hay, and like um, all, all the stuff like all the stuff that they need, and they'll just put it like in a trough and mm-hmm. they'll eat it. But they'll do that in. Um, and then there's like places that'll still do that, but it'll do it out in a pasture, so there could still be grass fed. Yeah, it, it, it's. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like it's it's really hard to I don't know. Like they can just slap a label on whatever. So, yeah. Like I said, I don't know. I know my my family tends to shop at farmers markets because they tend to trust those farmers. And a little I, bit more. honestly, like I would, like I would do farmers markets simply for the fact of supporting local farmers. Right. Yeah. That too. Um, that that's like my biggest thing. Like, um, just personally, like I I don't like if if you want to be the GMO free, um, organic, glucose free or yeah, glucose free, lactose free, all that. Um, glucose. Why did I say glucose free? <laughs> Gluten free. Jeez. Gluten free, like, lactose free. Like person. Like that's completely fine. I'm not telling you how to live your life. But yeah. like, I'm, like this is just how my life is. But I'm still gonna go to a farmers market just to support a local business. I'd rather support a local business that's going to be like sending that like their kid to like um, like a Girl Scout camp or yeah. or like the wrestling camp, uh, rather than going to Walmart and and, and investing in, in them that are not investing in anything yeah. else in the world. So just themselves. Um, but uh, what was it? Going back to the questions. Um, Got sidetracked. <laughs> well, New Jersey's calling me. Oh, um, yeah. better answer. So. Uh, just going like into into the future, like you're wanting to go into formulation for the cosmetics. Like, do you have like a dream company you want to like work for with that? I mean, like ideally, like working for someone like Estee Lauder or like L'Oreal would be awesome. Um, even like I don't know, even up and coming brands. Um, like I think. I think it's pretty cool what some of the smaller beauty brands are doing nowadays. So if I could do something like that, I would love to work for Jeffree Star if I could do that. Because <laughs> his formulations are killer. Oh, well, I'm sorry about him. <laughs> <laughs> you can think what you want yeah, about the yeah, man, yeah, but like, yeah. I don't know. I just, his, his, his makeup on point. <laughs> it is. Like, I have not found better formulations, in all honesty. So when you, say, when you say like small business, do you mean like just a small mom and pop, or do you mean like an upcoming one? Like, let's say, like, because Lady Gaga's company only has been out for like yeah, a year. Yeah, so or two, I would so. say that's a pretty small business. Okay, so yeah. it, it would be more of like definitely like a newer business rather than like. A celebrity-owned business kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just like yeah. So like even though like Lady Gaga's business is like obviously celebrity or owned, it's still pretty small business. Yeah. Like it's not lumped in with any of the big conglomerates. So, yeah. Like I mean, like Too Faced is a subsidiary of. I want to say I say louder. So, like there are a lot of like those larger name brands that are yeah. like either portions of Estee Lauder or would you still consider like Jeffree Star's company as like a small business then or would you say it's like definitely a major I think that one's become a major competitor just because of who he is and like what he does and he's definitely proliferated it pretty largely I wouldn't say it's on the same scale as like the other companies that he's in competition with um but like I don't know how big his like you know research labs are or anything like yeah. that so um couldn't tell you now would you say like louder um is simply because it's a big business due to um just how much they put out rather like quantity over quality or no so i will say a lot of those companies are still really invested in the quality that they're putting out to their customers um and like and I feel like that's that's true of like any business that you go to. They're gonna say like they want to keep up that standard that their customers have known, mm-hmm. and that's what's kept them coming back. So yeah. they still do that. I will say a lot of the formulations nowadays are kind of being branched out. Um, so there's not like a lot of in-house um, formulations going on. So those like branch out to the smaller company basically to like kind of get their formulation up until the last point and then they might make like a couple more changes that make it pro- proprietary to them yeah. so um now it was just like uh like the companies that you're talking about mm-hmm. um are they mostly like directed just for the individual use like just like you know like going out for a party or just like dressing up or nice or can like special effects artists like tom over here and like hollywood 
do they use those like company brands too or is there like actually like specific made i would say that they're that? like specific brands targeted more towards like special effects or stuff on stage just because it's heavier duty it tends to last longer mm-hmm. that's not to say that some makeup artists won't use like you know common household brands um simply because they work yeah because they do work and like a lot of them do perform pretty well um i think but yeah i mean like it's it's mainly when you're looking at like super special effects stuff obviously you can't really use the same well, stuff with, like hot makeup we were doing for like not realism you know it's exaggeration yeah on, you know the actor because what we were taught is that uh customers always sit for about 10 15 seconds so you have to squeeze in sure all this dramatic makeup to make it pop out at them whereas realism you know you have to kind of have the top quality stuff so with quick hot makeup we have a lot of alcohol based stuff we use sure. and, and water based stuff etc um and that we kind of gear more towards even with you know latex and stuff like that but if we're doing like i guess high quality makeup we do use like actual palettes all that kind of stuff too so sure sure I guess, I don't know, I think the most I've seen is there are specific, like, uh, foundations used mm-hmm. for, like, special effects that yeah. you wouldn't you wouldn't use. Like, you wouldn't use a foundation that you could pick up at a drug market. Mm-hmm. Like, that, it's just, like, it's not going to hold up for what you need um, in performances or on stage or, you know, under the lights or people running around and sweating. Um, you know, like, that makeup's not designed to hold up that way. Yeah. Um, not saying that it couldn't. It's just there are definitely better brands out there. So I think from what I know, like, Mayron and Ben Nye are, like, used quite a bit. Not Ben Gay, Ben Nye. <laughs> <laughs> it's go funny. not Ben Gay. <laughs> um, all right, so just going into the, um, the, last, uh, the last question, um, mm-hmm. I, I just want to simply know, like, Pretty much, who who would you look up to the most for um, your scientific field, and then like just also your your personal um, hero? Like currently, or like when I was younger? Um, either one that you want to go with. I mean, oh god, scientific wise, I mean, like I feel like I have to shout out like you know the women that really proliferated women in science. So like Marie Curie, Rosalind Franklin, who doesn't get the credit that she should. Um, which happens a lot, unfortunately. Um, stupid Watson and Crick. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> There's throwing some shade in here, aren't we? <laughs> well, she doesn't get mentioned, like, ever. Yeah. Even though she's the one that fucking did the research. They just slapped their names on it. It's fine. <laughs> Men. Right? Ugh. Um, so probably, like, those, those two, I think I looked up too a lot um obviously like they were dead but um <laughs> you, 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 you know yeah, just you, as inspirations that you know like women can actually do science and i think they contributed a lot to their fields um especially marie curie i think she's probably one of the ones that's m- most notable or like i guess recognized yeah even though that kind of happened after she died <laughs> usually how do? it works what are you gonna do after someone dies, then you find out how amazing they actually yeah, are. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. So, um, for the personal life, I honestly look up to my mom a lot. <laughs> oh. She's always been a big inspiration to me just because, uh, I don't know, she's just a really determined lady. So, yeah. I think she gave me a lot of the morals that I have and, like, the work ethic that I do have. So, yeah. not good enough morals since she's dating me, so. I mean, for what it's worth, I mean, yeah, you know, you and I, we uh, bust traps, but I would say for compatibility purposes and not cosmetic, because, I mean, you know, you're, you're a tall guy with, yeah, it's doing that right now, and I don't know why you're doing that, I <laughs> but, uh, I mean, both you guys have a very much a, once your mindset on something, you know, you guys can go ahead and accomplish it, so, I mean, I would say that's definitely the great thing to have a woman in in your life that's like sentimentality yeah I, like honestly her mom is is yeah. really awesome and um like obviously i haven't known her mom for like the entire life i've, I've known her for like mm-hmm. the two years um but like all the stories that carly told me about her mom ex- mm-hmm. extremely dedicated to um just 
the passion of singing and opera mm-hmm. and and not even just like just liking it but also sharing it with others and and with that sharing is is teaching um and bringing more people into it and then just how dedicated she is to her, her family always trying to help and um j- it's just an amazing mom and and the way that i look at it is just like i wish there was more moms like her and and my mom too because i think oh. they're like almost one and the same I, I bet um her mom in the world would do a talk fine with opera and music especially like uh, i grew up with Pavarotti and stuff like that oh uh, really yeah. oh i didn't know that yeah so i mean that's like one uh, of her favorites i'd be i think oh, you're about good oh he's good Shut up. you know who Pavarotti is i probably do but it's just you know um punisher yeah oh yeah flight? yeah yeah that's Pavarotti. yeah fun fact <laughs> <laughs> but um so yeah uh we do have to wrap this up um but Unfortunately, yeah, we're trying to do like that whole one hour thing because two hours is a long time. Yeah, I found yeah, out, but, and, and trust um, me, I, I, the add on to my part before we sign off is that Kyle, like, I, I, I didn't have any questions like before we started, but yeah. I have a bunch of questions now. It's like I wish I two parter. Is it going to be a two? I, I would like to. Do I mean, two-parter. yeah, you guys can bring me back. I would like to actually bring you back and, and yeah. go For from sure. there since it's just now I. I actually understand what the hell you're saying. Um, I can, I guess, translate, you know, like what I have in my head out in, in English without having to worry about some like a, a dunce. So <laughs> now you're still going to. Oh, thanks. You're our dunce. Thanks. We Appreciate love you, buddy. It. Yeah. It's so okay. I'm a, I'm a dunce. <laughs> I'm a dunce even. And oh, okay. So thank God we're not doing a webcam on this. But yeah. I'm a, I'm a dunce too, as to like your music world and everything. So. But that doesn't pay a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's like your profession, so you know. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, thank you so much for being our very first guest on our yeah, show. Yeah, thank you. Seriously, thank, thank, you. thank you for having me. It was, um, it was a lot of fun. Definitely right. would love to have you back because yeah, I I, I have a feeling we'll probably do like another like two episodes I, of I, just picking brain on yeah. on just makeup and um, just chemistry in general and and your thoughts of just like. Um, how the world is with with the view- their viewpoints on chemistry and how yeah. I actually like, yeah, it's like an everyday thing and you shouldn't be scared of it kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, because yeah, really, it's science. I, there's chemistry going on around us. There's yes. chemistry going on in your body. A lot of it in, in that we heart. still don't understand. <laughs> it, yeah, really. <laughs> A lot we don't understand. Because <laughs> one day butter's good, one day's butter bad. The next day eggs are good, the next day eggs are bad. Yeah, because yeah it's just like I said, it's a continual it, learning process. Yeah, so, and that's you know. that's how science is in, in all fields, uh, really. It's just constant learning, and it's always going to be that way, no matter what. Even in a million years, if we're still around and humanity's still around, we're still going to be learning new stuff. So, yes. Um, like yeah so um but yeah thank you so much for coming on miss uh dr organic dr organic you're welcome <laughs> and a uh, huge shout out to all the followers that are still with us and um except for the one that left because they do kratom <laughs> <laughs> but uh thank you all for being very yeah, thank uh, you guys. big fans and followers and um please uh if you do have any questions, just send them to, to me or Tom over here, and either on Facebook, Instagram, or if you have our emails or anything, and we'll write them down and bring them into our podcast. Um, and starting with the next one, if um, possibly we'll be having another guest, depending on how the I'll scheduling works out. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Um, but if not, we'll, we will be doing um, live shows through Facebook and Instagram mm-hmm. via webcam while we're recording. So as a heads up, if you're watching the recordings, you're just going to be an episode ahead. Um, and um, just yeah, have fun. And uh, what else was I gonna say? Um, really quick uh, to the adults, this is that wash your hands. Yep. <laughs> wash your hands. Wash your hands. Uh, please wash your hands. Uh, wear for, your masks. Wear your masks because me working in a my job field, we're gonna really be relying on all you guys, you yeah. know, to maintain a sanitary lifestyle. S- same please. with my job field too. Um, so. Please, please, just if if you want your gyms open, if you want your nutrition offices open, wear your mask, yes. wash your hands, and just be courteous of others, um, just others' concerns. Like if they want you to be ten feet away, just be polite, be ten feet away. Don't be a Karen. Yeah, don't be a Karen. Yeah, problem solved. And um, I'll yeah, again, we'll debate you all all day on how you're wrong with uh with the mask um, on things. <laughs> so, um, just yeah, practice um good hygiene good cleanliness and sanitation yes. wear your mask and just 
uh, stay up to date on what, what they're recommending you to stay safe Correct. and keep uh, others safe. Um, but yes, uh, please send us any messages and of questions or things that you want us to cover. Uh, check out our Patreon, um, donate money so we could do um, better equipment, better sound effects, and you know maybe actually uh, pay guests to come on. Like yeah, I don't know, <laughs> um, Jeffrey Star. <laughs> we could probably just get Jeffrey Star with. Over. I'll just go out and buy like two hundred dollars worth of cinnamon the, twist from Taco right, Bell like for all him. the discontinued stuff from Taco Bell. Yeah, which are now going to be quesadillas. I'm so, so mad. Yeah. They're getting rid of the spicy potato stuff taco, and that's my favorite. And I'm angry. I just eat actual actual tacos like a. Uh, but adult. spicy potato stuff taco. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> A Standard Fitness Podcast is out. Bye. If I can find the record button. There it is. Yeah, got Wait. it. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Oh, no, it's a stop button. <laughs>